job search schedule. Now, when you are looking for a job, finding a job is your job. So that means during business hours, Monday through Friday, you're not running errands, you're not cleaning the house, don't even think about touching the Xbox controller. If you have to give that to someone on their way out, you do so. You know who you are. But basically during business hours, Monday through Friday, you're up, you're showered, you're looking for a job by 8 o'clock. 5 o'clock, you're off if you want to be. But make sure that you are actually looking for a job. Make a job search schedule and stick to it. For example, you may decide that, okay, as a, as a goal, what I'm going to do each week is I'm going to apply for three jobs a day, Monday through Friday, online, with a highly tailored resume. If you don't make it during the week, maybe you've got to catch up on the weekend. Maybe you make it a goal to, you're looking for other types of jobs. So maybe I'm going to apply for five jobs in person a day. And I'm doing all the follow-up that goes with it. Maybe as a matter of this plan, you're also going to send out at least two or three targeted cover letter and resumes each week to companies or agencies you'd really like to work for. Maybe you're going to make at least two networking calls every day, Monday through Friday, and maybe you're going to hit a job fair every week or two. That is a weekly, a good example of a weekly, a full weekly job search schedule. So definitely make a schedule and stick to it. Finding a job is your job. So follow up aggressively, stick to your plan. Networking. We've all heard that it's not what you know, it's who you know. Okay, great. What is it that I'm supposed to do with that nugget of wisdom? Well, there's lots of ways to network. Networking works, though. Of all the ways to look for a job, networking is typically the most effective. In fact, a lot of the articles that I read lately tell me that you have an 80% better chance of getting hired when you're referred in by a current employee. And think about your own experience, places you've worked. You know, you, that is how it works. You, know. you talk to your boss about one of your friends that's highly qualified, and you sing their praises. Next thing you know, they're in getting interviewed, and the boss already has a positive perception of them, and they wind up getting hired. That's the way the world works. So, with that in mind, network as a part of your weekly job search process. And here's one simple way to network. Lots of different ways. Here's a simple way. Start with a list of five or six people you know, maybe ten people you know, that work somewhere where you also would like to work. It could be, think of friends, previous co-workers, friends of friends, family, friends of family, anybody. Call them up or talk to them in person. A networking conversation can go something as simple as this. 30 seconds to a minute of chit chat. Hey, how you doing? This is Steve. I haven't talked to you since, blah, blah, blah. Great. The reason I'm calling, and then roll into your 30 second commercial. Basically, that's the center paragraph of your cover letter. You're telling them what kind of job you're looking for, why you're qualified, and why you are awesome. In 30 seconds or less. Why 30 seconds or less? Well, any more than that, their eyes might start glazing over. Besides, they start forgetting things. So get to the point pretty quickly. And by the way, you're probably calling them for, uh, for an administrative type job, an office type setting. You're probably calling them while they're at work with their Outlook database right in front of them on their computer. So get to the point fairly quickly, but tell them what kind of job you're looking for, why you're qualified, and why you're awesome, 30 seconds or less. Here's what you want them to say at the end of your 30-second commercial. You want them to say, wow, you are qualified. Tell you what, Bob Davis is a hiring manager for that position at our company. Here's his phone number. Here's his email address. 
why don't you email me your resume, I'll print it out, I'll walk it down the hall to him and talk you up and let him know that you're going to follow up. That gives you a huge leg up on other people. And you know what? It doesn't necessarily have to be at a company that has a job posted. You can network like crazy. All medium to large size companies always have openings for good quality people. So definitely take advantage of networking to help you get that inside track. You can network through volunteering. Those are great, great opportunities for networking at church. You can network at drill. Think of all the people at drill who all, most of them work somewhere in all kinds of jobs. So you can network in person. Hey man, where do you work? Really? Do you like it? Do they have whatever kind of position you're looking for? Well, sure. Well, then roll into your 30-second commercial and see where it goes. Hey, could I email you a copy of my resume? Would you mind giving it to that hiring manager and talking me up a little bit? I really appreciate that. You know what? Most people are more than willing to help you out. So definitely take advantage of networking opportunities. Now let's talk about some other techniques for finding a job, and these should be part of your weekly job search plan. For example, something I call targeted technique. You can call it anything you want, but basically it involves writing a nice cover letter, addressing it to an individual person at a company or agency you would really like to work at, signing it, and attaching a very nice well-written resume, putting it in an envelope, hand addressing it, and putting a stamp on it and mailing. Yes, snail mail. Remember that? You actually put something and a mailman comes and gets it. Now, 10 years ago, that wouldn't have been earth-shattering technique. But these days, think about it. If you get a million emails a day, let's say you get an email from someone you don't know. You're busy. Are you going to read it? Hmm. Maybe, probably not, probably delete it. And if it has an attachment, heck no, it might be a, a virus. But if you receive something in the mail addressed to you from someone you don't know, let's say it's printed, the envelope is printed, you might think, oh, well, this is probably junk mail. But what if it's hand addressed? You're really busy, you're stressed out, you've got a million things to do, but who the heck is Steve Greathouse and why is he sending me a letter? You have to open it. That curiosity dictates. So you open it up, and if what you see is a short and concise but very well-written cover letter, a beautiful-looking resume, you know what? Even if you're not the right person at that company to hire for that kind of position, you know what? Most professionals are going to get it to the right person. As long as it's well-written, it's short and to the point, and you're qualified for the type of job that you're seeking. So definitely give that a try. Research a company or two every single week as part of your weekly job search plan. Do some research on their, on their website, read some of their press releases, whatever it takes. Find a high level person at that company. Now obviously you'd like to find somebody that is high up in the area that you would like to work in or the specific hiring manager. But chances are you won't know that information. But find a person by name and address that cover letter to them. Make sure you tailor that cover letter, print it out, sign it, attach your resume, make sure you kind of tailor that resume, at least in general, to the type of job that you want, and mail it to them. Make sure in your cover letter you let them know that you're going to be following up with them on your cover letter resume. That way when you call and you get that gatekeeper on the phone, what is this regarding? You can say, well, it's Steve Greathouse calling for Bob Davis. He's expecting my call. Well, he is expecting your call because you told him that you were going to be following up. So use that technique. In fact, you can hit several people at one company. But make that part of your weekly job search plan. Be surprised how effective that technique is. And if you don't get anything from that, Show up. Try it out. Ask for that person. He's expecting me. I told him I'd be following up. So you might have to be a little bit aggressive, but it's a terrific technique. Well, 
All right, let's talk briefly about jobs that just require an application. Let's say uh, you're a college student, you just need a part-time job while you're going to school, or you need a job right now. What about jobs like at Best Buy, retail stores, or restaurants, something like that, where you don't even use a resume. They don't want one. They want an application. Well, great. Here's the technique for getting those jobs. And it's a little bit more aggressive than what most people do. What is it most people do? I, use, I call it a hand grenade technique, right? They come in, fill out an application, and then they drop it off a new one, right? It's, it's in their comfort zone, and then they just hope for the best. So let's say that they go into a restaurant, they ask for an application, and let's call her Lisa, the 16-year-old perky girl at the front of the restaurant. She gives you an application, you go to the bar, fill it out, you come back, don't just hand it to Lisa and walk out. Who knows what happens to your application? Who knows what Lisa has done with it? Or if it ever gets to the manager? Better technique. Come back to Lisa. You can read her name tag. Use her name when you ask for something. Use their name. And say, Lisa, who's the manager on duty right now? Oh, OK. It's Lori Jones. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to take up any of her time today. But Lisa, would you mind getting her real quick? I just want to introduce myself and hand her my application in person. Would you mind getting her for me? Let her know I'm not going to take up any of her time today. Thank you so much. You use Lisa's name. You were very friendly. And you thanked her before she even did anything. You know what? Most people will go get the manager, especially if you reiterate that you're not going to take up any of their time today. That, may, that relaxes them right away. So the manager comes out, eye contact, warm smile, Confident handshake. Hi, my name is Steve Greathouse. I just filled on, out an application for a server position. I'm not going to take up any of your time today. I just wanted to introduce myself and give you my application personally. I just, and if you just returned from a deployment or something, or you're a college student, definitely throw that in. Those are good things. You might even say something nice about their restaurant. My name is Steve Greathouse. I just return from a deployment, I'm a college student, and I really love Best Buy, so I'd love to work here while I'm going to school. See where it goes. You know what? A lot of times, if they're not busy, they'll engage you in conversation right then and there. And obviously, by the way, you're not going to go when it's really busy. You're not going to go to a retail store on Saturday afternoon. You're not going to go to a restaurant during a lunch rush. But try to pick a time that's not very really busy and try that technique. And let's say that the manager you're talking to says something like they're really distracted. Like they say, well, I tell you what, that's great. And uh, yeah, we'll check it out. And uh, we'll let you know. Thanks a lot. You know what? I, I can tell you're really busy, Lori. Is there a time that I could come back tomorrow and visit with you for just a few minutes about how my skills and abilities really make me an asset here at whatever? You know what? All right. Tell you what. Come back at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Bam. You just set up your own interview. That works. Try that out. And let's say that they say something like, you know what, we don't really have any openings right now, but we'll keep it on file. OK, I really appreciate. Tell you what, is there a time that I can, would it be OK to follow up with you at the end of next week, say next Friday about 2 o'clock? Uh, yeah, sure. Great. I'll see you next Friday at 2 o'clock. Thank you so much. Boom, get out of there. You know why? Because that manager is going to take a few steps away from you and go, crud, did I just set up an interview with that guy for next Tuesday at 2 o'clock or Friday at 2 o'clock? Yep. So you show up next Friday at 2 o'clock. Hi, my name is Steve Greathouse. Here to see Lori. She's expecting me. She is. You told her you're going to be there. Now, I know that's pretty aggressive, but that's an example of the type of aggressiveness that will get you hired. Just be very, very friendly and very professional at the same time. And that technique really, really works. Let's talk about job fairs for a moment. How do most people work job fairs? Well, they show up, 20 resumes, the same resume. They have no idea who's going to be there. They walk in the door, just start waiting in lines. And you know what, by the way? I talk to these people that work job fairs all the time, 
You know what they hate? You know what they really hate? Is when you walk up to the front of the line, you waited all that time in line, you get up there and you say, so, what do you guys do? They hate that. So, let's talk about a better way to work a job fair. First of all, all job fairs these days usually have a website. So before you decide to go to a web, uh, job fair, go to their website. See what companies are going to be there. See what jobs those companies have. If there's not going to be any companies there with jobs that you want, don't go. Okay? So, do some research. Find out who's going to be there. And let's, let's say that you find a job fair with companies that are going to be there. You can click on the hyperlink usually to each company and see what jobs they have available. So let's say you find a job that you like and that you're qualified for, or almost qualified for. Print out the job description. Highlight it. Highlight all the keywords, key phrases, specific to education, skills, experience, etc. Highlight anything that seems important. Tailor your resume to it. And then show up to that job fair with one of those or two or three tailored resumes for specific jobs that you know are available. And guess what? A lot of times you'll wait in that line and that same recruiter will be telling people all day long, great, apply on our website. Great, apply on our website. And then you get up there and say, hi, my name is and here's my resume for the such and such position at the Perryville office. And here's my resume. After telling people apply online all day, sometimes that same recruiter will be so impressed that someone actually did some preparation that they may actually talk to you right then and there. Or maybe give you their personal business card and say, hey, email this to me and I'll forward it to the hiring manager when I get back to the office. Or they'll snatch it out of your hand and say, this is awesome. I will hand it to the hiring manager. But you know what? Be honest with you. Some of those recruiters are still going to say, super, apply on our website. But have you really wasted any time? No. You've already tailored a resume. It's on your computer at home. So when you get home, go to their website, upload that resume that you've already tailored. Hit submit. You haven't really wasted any time. But I bet you now, you also, though, have a business card, some kind of contact information, somebody you can bug at that company to follow up with, right? There you go. So that's a little bit better way to work a job fair than just showing up. Definitely check out the resources on our website at md.ngb.army.mil and feel free to come by my office anytime, the 5th Regiment Armory on the third floor in the education office. My office hours are Tuesday through Fridays at 08 to 1600.